And in this video, we're going to learn on this episode of Jazz in Charge, the biggest award in board. These six contestants each have board games that have caught their eye that they are eager to talk about. They shall all reveal their game suggestions here to compete in a contest of survival, sponsored by Renquist Energy Drinks. Who will be eliminated and which games will remain on the radar? What is going on here? How do you mean? I was just on my way to change the sign out front to say party lemmings when I overheard you recording the new intro. Well, yeah, it appears that the channel's new owners have changed on the radar into some type of survival reality show. But that doesn't make sense. How do our game picks compete against each other? Yeah, and what does eliminated mean? Off the episode or off the channel or... I don't think my body can handle chugging another one of those sponsor energy drinks. I think they're mostly dirty dishwater. I asked the sponsor about that and they confirmed that you are way off. That doesn't change the point that we're all a little on edge because of what eliminated could mean. Well, personally, I'm choosing to look on the bright side of this. Of course you are. I just think we can all benefit from increasing the stakes around here. You know, put a little fire in the belly. Nothing like a crazy joy ride to charge everyone up. <laughs> the only joy ride I want to go on is in my first game pick of the month, the upcoming joy ride Survival of the Fastest, in which two to four car clad combatants will crash, blast, and race their way to victory around customizable tracks. Do whatever it takes to beat your opponents to the finish line, whether that be through skillfully weaving your way around the track or bashing your opponents out of the way to claim victory. Sometimes the fastest route to the finish line is through everyone else. So even though this game won't be coming out until next year, it's crowdfunding at the time of me recording this, I got to play a prototype and had a blast, both figuratively and literally. This game is so fun. Its mechanisms and theme work so well together. I really felt like I was in a race, crashing my car, jumping off ramps, spilling out oil. It felt awesome. Also awesome is the first game that helped make this episode possible. Legendary Encounters The Matrix from Upper Deck. Legendary Encounters The Matrix puts one to five players right into the action of the Matrix trilogy as you choose a hero, free your mind, and encounter deadly sentinels while defending the underground city of Zion from relentless machines. Along the way, you'll also discover hidden enemies, villains that start off face down and must be scanned in order to turn them face up before they strike. Additionally, coordinated attacks and recruitment both return, which can greatly improve the odds by working together, which <laughs> you're gonna need. So follow the link in this video's description to plug in as Neo or other iconic heroes from the films in Legendary Encounters The Matrix deck building game. Oh and now we're ready to continue on to the tournament portion of our competition where contestants will battle for the title of On the Radar using medieval weaponry and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh, do you have our Scandinavian bolt launcher? Nah, it's still being restrung. And that's why it pays to keep a blacksmith on retainer. Um, does it bother anyone else that we're all so prepared for this? Between energy drink induced blackouts, I've been keeping my medieval tactics skills sharp with the abstract strategy game Nine Knights, in which players need to reach goal tiles with the matching knight in order to win. Players assign numbers to their knights, which indicates not only its goal tile, but also its strength in battle against enemy knights. As a result, winning requires wisely selecting knights to move and also deducing the numbers of your opponent's pieces before they know yours. This is the second of three games in a series called Whistone, developed by Go Grandmaster Lee Sedol. These games look lovely, and I'm interested in each one of them, especially Nine Knights. Now, I'll be ready for our combat arena as soon as I get my quarter staff. Out of the attic. You have a quarter staff? Well, I got on sale, so it's more of a penny farthing staff. Are we really going to let party lemmings turn us into some sort of three ring circus? Not to be pedantic, but I suppose they're technically turning us more into a combat arena than a circus. Or a coliseum. I was thinking Thunderdome. Okay, is everyone around here suddenly an expert on circuses? Well, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but three ring circus has been on my radar, where one to four ring masters compete to hire the best jugglers, clowns, magicians, strong men, and wild beasts as they travel the countryside putting on performances to gain fame and fortune. As the cities get bigger, so do the crowds, but also the risks. And did the multicolored circus top pieces also catch my interest? Yes. 
Yes, they did. But more than that, the idea of starting with a blank slate circus company and building it up over the course of the game, that appeals to the part of me that really enjoys games that let you create something from nothing and then hopefully discover that you've made something pretty great. And all this comes with a bright, fun theme, which, since I recognized all that, I suppose does make me an expert on circuses. We also have a circus-themed game on our radar this month, The Magnificent. The Magnificent uses a dice economy to secure contracts for various circus acts in a tightly designed Euro game that also injects vibrant colors into its design. Players expand their performances by placing Tetris-style tiles on their player board, gathering elements needed for the shows, and setting up performances in their tents. After three rounds, the player who's collected the most points has assembled the greatest show on Earth, and wins the game. We've been very curious about this game since its release due to its unique theme. It's a game about performers that also utilizes dice drafting as well as polyomino tiles, so we are both very intrigued. Oh, I've just been informed that Rodney, Monique, and Naveen have each scored a point. There's points now? How are these points being calculated? I don't know. Maybe they're being entered into a complex, sophisticated, machine-like algorithm to all be tabulated. You know, perhaps one similar in size and scope to the aggressive AI from my first radar pick, City of the Great Machine a one-versus-many strategy game set in a Victorian steampunk universe. This game centers around the conflict between the Great Machine, an artificial intelligence network, and an alliance of heroes. The Great Machine is either controlled by a player or is automated. But either way, the Great Machine's ultimate goal is to suppress social unrest and complete its grandiose master plan to perfect mankind, while the players rebel by enlisting the support of citizens and inciting riots to prevent the Grand Machine from completing its master plan. I stumbled across this game while researching last month's Board Game Buyer's Guide episode and was immediately intrigued by its premise and table presence. Oh boy howdy. I also like the modularity of its design and the fact that it can play as one against many, all against the game, or even a single player mode, each with slightly different approaches, but still sharing the same underlying gameplay. I'm really looking forward to continuing to explore everything that this game's experience has to offer. So how many points was that worth? Oh, well, it sounds like three points for the game pick. Nice. With a negative seven point penalty for my presentation. Ouch. Perhaps you could preempt penalties by polishing the power of your performance. Precisely. I myself was able to pump up the power and go from eclectic to electric in Powerline, the next game on my radar this month, in which power providers distribute dice to connect cities with new sources of energy production. Over several rounds, players use six colored dice rolled and arranged on their designated spaces on a central board to build the power lines on their personal board. However, each die may only be used a certain amount of times, and skipping a die incurs a penalty. Points are earned for completing power lines in connected cities, but deducted for leaving them incomplete charged up about a game with simple actions each turn, you know, such as rolling dice and assigning them to spaces, and that those simple actions lead to real brain-burning choices. I found Powerline to be a very satisfying puzzle that did, indeed, grill my gray matter, puzzle my brain up. Plus, there was no downtime because everyone takes simultaneous turns. Then, the player with the most points wins, of course. Oh, four points for Paula! Speaking of points, what prizes are these points being accumulated towards? That's a good question. Um, you know, that info shouldn't be hard to get. So while I go find out, let's hear from the other game that's not hard to get, which helped make this episode possible, Hard to Get, from Gameplay Publishing. In Hard to Get, a group of ace detectives work together to find a correct code word by solving tricky clues that are provided by a witness. But these clues are given as a series of tricky little questions, such as are pirates more hip-hop or heavy metal? Is Halloween over or underrated? Is Chaz Marler more king or court jester? Wait, who put that one in here? Over the course of five rounds, Hard to Get leads the conversation to strange new, fascinating places until only the correct code word remains on the table. Follow the link in this video's description to find more information about Hard to Get and discover it when it becomes available at this year's Essen Spiel in October. And discover hilarious new connections at your next game night. Oh, and I have just heard back about the points, and after all of the feats of endurance, strength, and grit, who's ever left standing with the most points will receive a full endorsement from Rinquist Energy Drinks worth 
five hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. It's tempting. No, you know what? Who needs money when you have friends like these? Yeah, we won't sell each other out. We love you guys. Our friendship is worth more than any sponsorship money. But man, this is refreshing and delicious. And we'll also receive a coupon for ten percent off this set of six-sided dice. I could always use more dice. Oh, those dice will be mine. Out of my way. Oh my gosh, you can really taste the platypus milk. Personally, I'm looking on the bright side of this because I may have the advantage when it comes to inheriting that prize, having recently mastered the skill of inheriting things thanks to the open drafting card game, Inheritors. As one of the king's inheritors, two to four players seek influence among five clans, spying on their competitors, gaining the support of clan leaders, and tipping the courts in their favor to win the throne. Inheritors strives to provide a big game experience in a small box, making these political machinations completely portable. That's right. This small box card game involves open drafting. And I don't have a lot of titles that I can think of right now that use that mechanism. Also, the newest printing coming from North Star Games also includes some updates to refine its gameplay and production. And all of those things together make this a tidy little package that I'm keen to check out, which I believe also inherits me into the lead. Slow down, slow down, Rodney. Inheritors is also on our radar. Yeah, we've really been enjoying this clever card game, how the card market works and how it uh, encourages players to discard cards to it in specific ways. And we also enjoy the asymmetric clan leaders and how it makes the game replayable. So this is uh, one that we're really looking forward to playing more of. Multiple selections for the Inheritors card game. <laughs> what a twist. If you really want to twist, then I recommend using trick taking to solve murder mysteries. In the other game currently on my my radar stick for stick deduction by trick taking one player knows who the perpetrator and the murder weapon are while all the other players are in the dark but every trick is a clue because the murderer and the weapon always come up trumps so the sleuths track down the culprit trick by trick at the same time the player who knows the truth tries to throw the others off the trail only by keeping a cool head and playing the cards carefully can you convict the culprit trick taking deduction deceit and murder, I'm all in. I'm also looking forward to playing this card game as well. Wait, how many points was that for Matthew? What are everyone's scores at? Who, who's in the lead? I'm not sure. Well, we know it's not Chaz. Victory will be mine! You will perish in flanks. Everyone for themselves. Everyone stop. Don't you see what's happening? Uh, friendly competition? No, Party Lemmings is trying to tear us apart. I've just received a message from Party Lemmings saying, no, they're not. <laughs> They are. First, they broke Rodney's spirit, telling us to replace his watch it played sign with one that reads party lemmings. My spirit's not broken. Personally, I'm looking on the bright side of this. Really? No, I'm falling apart. There is literally a watch it played logo sized hole in my soul that can only be filled by our original channel branding. Then they're trying to off Matthew by sending him all that poison disguised as energy drinks. Joke's on them. I was raised in the West Midlands. The air is basically poison here, so these energy drinks are laughable by comparison. Okay, then they tried to eliminate Chaz with faulty studio equipment. Nah, we determined that that was just a coincidence. Besides, since then, they have sent me a bunch more lights and booms and rigging, all of which is dangling right above me right now, and not a single piece has been defective. See, everything's good. Seriously, I don't, I don't know what we're all waiting to have happen. Look, Paula, I'm willing to entertain any unbelievably outlandish conspiracy theory that someone comes up with, no matter how much I may secretly mock them about it behind their back afterwards. I mean, so look at Matthew. Thank you. But right now, all you have is a theory. What you need is some evidence. Oh, hang on. I am receiving a reminder that you still need to go change the sign out front from saying watch it played to party lemmings. All right. Now, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> I just got interrupted and lost my train of thought. Evidence, right. You're right. Evidence. 
But in the meantime, we can beat their game if we stick together. Like a team. Yeah! Like friends. Yeah. Like a blob. Yeah! Wait, what? A blob as in the other game on my radar this month. Blob Party, where players win by conglomerating into a blob. Oh yes, that clears it right up for us. Thank you. Blob Party is a cooperative party game in which players start as individuals and try to all give the same answers to questions, becoming one big blob. Literally, everyone starts with a small blob of squishy dough and a googly eye. And as you match with more and more other players, you merge blobs growing larger and adding more googly eyes. This caught my interest because here's a game with a central mechanism where players increase their score by smashing Play-Doh together. I have squishy dough all over my hands, and yes, they are slippery, but even so, I can't wait to try it again right after I take this box of letters to go change the sign out front to save party. Oh, curse these dough-coated hands of mine. Wait, no, it can't be. It's not possible. You know, Paula, if you're thinking that we could call this game's bluff, well, it might be a chance for me to put my bluff calling skills to good use, which I recently sharpened thanks to the other game on my radar this month, Antimatter, a sci-fi mashup of tabletop tactics and Texas Hold'em. Chaz, um, you need to see this. In Antimatter, three to six cunning spacefarers each vie to plunder, smuggle, gamble, and bluff their way to supremacy among the stars. Jazz! The game attempts to blend the betting and bluffing of Texas Hold'em Poker together with strategy gaming, dividing each round into phases of strategic connection building to collect loot, and playing poker hand. Chaz, you really need to see this. The mixing of game genres always intrigues me, and Antimatter seems to have that in spades. <laughs> Literally, that's cool. Plus, the game's title was also a pun, which did take me about a week to, 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 to realize. Regardless, I am really, really interested in taking Antimatter out for a spin, and there's actually also some suggested house rules for its end game that are posted on its Board Game Geek forum, which I'm also curious to implement as well. Chaz! Huh? You wanted evidence? Well, I found it. And it means you're in grave danger. Look at this! What? No, if, if that's true, then, then, then that means that, that... Oh no.